Welcome to 100% Real. I'm so glad to have you on here today. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. So this is episode two in 100% Real and this is a series that we're doing on my channel where I get to interview all of my beautiful friends and family um, and pretty much give them a platform um, to let God speak and let them share what God has done in their life. And I'm so excited um, to have one of my beautiful friends, Lilia, here with me today. And why don't you start off by introducing yourself? Who are you? Where are you from? How did we meet? Yes, so my name is Lilia and I'm 20 years old and I'm from Germany, actually from the south of Germany. And I spent my last year in Australia doing yeah, a gap year and then that's where I met Kristen and now I just started studying and I want to become a primary teacher. So that's pretty much all I'm doing at the moment. So my first question for you today, Lilia, what have you been up to this year? Share with us what's been going on in your life. You said that um, you've been in Australia and now you're studying. So what does your life kind of look like? Yes, so I came back from Australia pretty much exactly a year ago, which is yeah. crazy. <laughs> um, and then when I came back, I just spent so much time with my family because I obviously haven't seen them in a year. And then I was working and we went on vacation. And then in October 2019, I moved to a new city and, and I started studying. And that's pretty much taking up. Yeah, a lot of times, so yeah. that's what I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> so cool, so cool. So the next question uh, is a question that I love to ask everybody on this series, and that is, what is the biggest thing that God has done in your life this year? I actually think there are two things. I hope that's okay. If I Absolutely. <laughs> so as I mentioned already, I moved to a new city last year, and with moving there, obviously, I didn't know a lot of people. So I was scared of being all by myself, not knowing what to do, or just being bored maybe the whole day. But within just a few weeks, God just put so many amazing people around me that have become such great friends. And I'm so, so thankful for that. So that's, that's just been so cool. Amazing. And another thing, at the beginning of this year, I was... I was just praying for routine because I was reading my Bible at some point of the day and um, mm. just whenever it suited me, I read my Bible, but I realized that when I do it in the morning, it really, it changes my day and I know that's different for everyone mm. and everyone has like their time when it suits them, but I found out that for me it is the morning, so I was just praying that it would really establish a place in my morning routine. And it's not always easy because I'm not really that of a morning person, <laughs> so I like sleeping in and just staying in bed as long as possible. But I was really praying for that because I really wanted it to happen. Mm. And now, like being almost six months into this year, or no, actually being six months yeah, into this year. Yeah, we are year, now, hey, so cool. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, I really think that it is a part of my morning routine now. and. Yeah, it's, it's just become normal getting up maybe 20 minutes earlier to just read my Bible and have mm. my time with God. So that's just been something I'm really, really thankful for. That's so awesome to hear about the amazing things that God has been doing. And it's so cool how, you know, you just said like you were praying because that was something that you really wanted to do. And I feel like that was so in line with what God wants as well, because God wants to spend time with us and he wants to have us be surrounded by people that are going to encourage us as well. So how did you meet those friends um, that you've really grown this beautiful friendship with now? Yeah, so in my new city, there's like um, like a youth group, but for people who go to uni, mm. kind of, if that makes sense. Yeah. And when I started studying, I started to go there and we meet every Thursday and we have like a service and we have worship and a mm. sermon and afterwards we just hang out and that's probably where I met most of the people. Some of them are really like actually studying with me and one friend and um, she was actually, so I don't know if I already mentioned, but last year in Australia I did PACE yeah. and then when I came back to Germany we had a conference with all the people that just 
came back from their year abroad and we had people joining from Australia, New Zealand, America. And at that conference, I met a girl and she just came back from America. And then we found out that we're actually going to study in the same city, the same wow. subject. Just exactly the same thing. And that's been so cool. And her cousin, she just came back with Pace as well. And she's studying at my uni as well, but for secondary. But wow. But that's just been so amazing. So cool how God just puts like exactly what you need at the right time, hey? So it's almost yeah. like you prayed about it, but you almost didn't even have to stress about it because God just made it happen, right? Mm-hmm. And the other question I wanted to ask you is you talked about doing your quiet time and making that a routine. So what are some things that you do in your quiet time that you really enjoy? Like maybe you switch it up and do different things every now and then, but what are some things that you have found yourself doing the most i love journaling and i love yeah. just sitting there reflecting on the things that maybe have happened writing down things i'm praying for and also we have prayers god already answered so that's something i just love and that's part of my quiet time pretty much mm. every day so yeah i so love journaling cool. <laughs> so good me too i love it So obviously you would have had lots of plans for this year and having study and then having like holidays, but obviously because of the current world situation, that's probably all changed quite a bit, right? So I wanted to ask you, what has been the hardest thing about the coronavirus and how has that affected you during this time? Yeah, that's a good question. So at, in, at the moment in Germany we are in spring so it's mm-hmm. lovely getting summer and I was really looking forward to just yeah nights at the park and mm-hmm. having barbecues and trying the sun being outside hanging out with people and I've heard that from a lot of people that probably not being able to catch up with your friends is one of the hardest things to yeah, corona definitely but now that the rules are kind of easing up a bit it's getting better and i really enjoy seeing some of my friends again mm. that i haven't seen in like three months but it's been yeah a long time. such a long time but i really yeah totally and i really enjoy being able to do that now but even during the times where we weren't really able to catch up um, I just loved spending so much time with my family and mm. only my family, so not really having things, I don't know, other things or so, but really spending time with my family is something I love. And also still having, yeah, those those dates for a small group or mm-hmm. a Sunday service, still being in my schedule so that I know, okay, Tuesday night, 7 p.m., we're doing small group and I'm going to see my friends again. Yeah. It's only in Zoom, but still, like, still being able to catch up, talk to one another is yeah. something that's been super helpful. And just in general, living in the 21st century, having things yeah. like Zoom, WhatsApp, mm. Instagram, I don't know, whatever it is, but that we can still be in contact with mm. our friends is something i'm so thankful for that's amazing so i loved hearing about the ways you were able to kind of almost combat the stuff that was i guess it can sometimes weigh us down too we get really disappointed and we can get really discouraged but it's awesome to hear how you were combating that and fighting and still trying to stay positive um so what was probably the biggest thing that helped you to stay positive I mean, we all get the days where we feel a bit down, but what was the biggest thing that helped you to stay positive um, and keep being proactive even in a time where we had to kind of stay at home for like three months long or even some people are still at home. So how, how did you do that? So one thing I loved was just going for a walk or just Mm. like just getting out of the house, even if it's just for a walk, that's something I loved or even going to the groceries and just yeah yeah being somewhere else even if it's just for an hour but that's something yeah that's just been helpful for me Mm -hmm. doing other things instead of sitting there and yeah thank you so much for sharing that with us Lilia the next question I want to ask I love kind of finishing this time with asking some fun questions um, what is one of the biggest dreams that you have for your future 
Well, as I said, I'm planning to become a primary teacher. So yeah. being a primary teacher is one of my biggest dreams. But also at some point, having my own little family, being yeah. married, having my own kids, that's something. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to you. Oh, and I know that you will be absolutely amazing at both of them, guys. She's an incredible teacher. She hasn't even studied yet, and it's totally a gift on her life. And I know that from, you know, being able to work with her every week. It's amazing. She has such a gift with kids. Um, I can't wait to see you have your own family too. I think it's going to be so, so precious. So precious. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So if you could go back to maybe talk to yourself pre-coronavirus time or even talk uh, to yourself like when you were 13, what is the biggest piece of advice that you would give yourself? Probably just to really like dig into God's word because there's so much good stuff in there, mm-hmm. not only in the New Testament, but also in the Old Testament, even if we maybe don't get that message exactly like love your neighbor or whatever it is but there's so much good stuff in there and we Mm -hmm. only need to discover it and maybe spend time with it and it might be harder to read than the new testament but the old testament is so good and there's so much good stuff in there so good i totally agree and there's so many different bible plans out there that can kind of help you if you struggle um even just kind of understanding the context because obviously it was written quite a while ago so the the times that they were kind of in were probably very different to what we live in now so understanding the deeper meaning and even the fact that it was originally written in a different language um, like the original Hebrew text has so much meaning that sometimes the English language lacks to kind of explain so definitely there's so many different um, Bible courses that you can do to help you kind of get in that thinking as well That's amazing, Lilia. Thank you. And the last question um, before we finish is one of my other favorite questions to ask people. And I asked the same to Rachel as well. And I said that when I was on uh, the Performing Arts DTS, this became like the big question of our DTS that we asked all of our speakers that came in when we did like the, the introduction circles where you're meeting new people. This is what we asked. What is your favorite dessert? I love chocolate, so probably anything with chocolate, no matter if it's brownies or chocolate lava cake or chocolate (laughs) ice cream or just chocolate, I love chocolate. (laughs) Me too, it's so good. Is Australian chocolate or German chocolate better, in your opinion? Well, I love Tim Tams. Oh, yes. (laughs) Nothing is better than Tim Tams, but I think... I prefer German chocolate except for Tim Tams. Okay, I agree. It's really good. I have had German chocolate and it's really, really yummy. Thank you so much for joining me, Lilia. I just pray that you have a beautiful day. Thanks so much for sharing what's been going on in your life. I know it's blessed me and I know it will bless so many other people. Thank you so, so much for having me. You're so welcome and hopefully we will see you again super soon. See ya! See you.